Hi everyone and welcome to today's card creation where we're going to be using the Wreath Builder Element Stamp Set here from Uniquely Creative's latest release. Now these come with coordinating dies um, which is so lovely to use. Now we'll also be using an ultra metal die here and we're going to be using the Hello from this trio set and then I've got some cross stitch circles as well as some deco foil toner sheets because we're going to be using some wow embossing fab foil in the gold at well I bring into view the gold but I actually changed my mind later to rose gold and you'll see why so with the distress ink combination here I have got the tree Tattered Rose, Seedless Preserve, and Victorian Velvet. So I'm mixing between Distress Oxide inks as well as Distress inks. So here's the circle die cut, and I've got my ink blending tool. Now I will be starting with the lightest ink first. Now my biggest tip with working with Distress Oxide and Distress inks is make sure that you clean your surface and don't use the same um, ink blending tool because you don't want to mix the two inks up the two ink pads up so to protect the surface my surface I um, have used a post-it note so I'm not putting fingerprints on here I am going back to Tatters, Tattered Rose I'm going to be toing and froing because I really want to make this blend really seamless so here I am making sure now I want more like a side ombre look Gonna, the ombre is going to be the heaviest down the bottom left and it's going to work its way to the top right being at a lighter colour. So that's what I mean by a ombre. Um, now I am adding a little bit of all the colours. I'm trying to focus making sure I'm keeping that highlight of the tattered rose um, well and not to overpower the dark inks. Now the seedless preserve is just a smidge touch just a touch I really wanted to create that little bit more of an ombre and here I am like I'm just barely touching it I'm just adding this really 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 finely and I'm just making sure I'm using that ink blending tool now I'm not going to try and pick up any more here so I'm going to take that off um, because I really just want to add that ombre and then what I'll do is I'll bring that back and then I'm almost smush it blend it back with the tattered rose here and you can see how well that worked but it added that extra depth I was after so cleaning my surface and I'm just I'm actually was really happy with that combo um, and I've got my onyx black ink here I'm going to stamp the little it's like wreaths or yeah Builder wreaths from here from the set. I, I do choose Onyx Black Ink because of the fine detail in this image, and I do take my time in making sure I've applied an even amount of pressure because um, it is quite a detailed um, image. Now, once I feel I was happy with that, I then make sure I use the coordinating die. I love that these dies are already cut apart. Well, I don't have to snip them apart. Like, how convenient is that? It is a little tiny bit extra in the power, in the price point, but I think it's really well worth the price. And I find Uniquely Creative are really reasonable with their prices anyway. So I'm bringing into view the fab foil, but I chose rose gold instead. So I do change my mind, and that's what I was telling you before. Um, I bring the gold into view, but I think with the tone of the ink blending, the rose gold really matched it far better than the, the really full-on gold. So I've die cut it with the toner sheet, that hello sentiment. I have cut a little bit of the foil out. I've got a parchment paper, which I folded in half. It actually came with the toner sheet pack anyway. So um, I've just cut it down and then I've got my um, protector sheet here that came with my mink and I've got it in heat setting three. I do bring it into view. I am stretching the cord a little here in the background, which you don't see. So, um, you know, bit of background movement going on trying to not trip on wires <laughs> and cords but I got there so this goes through at a really snail pace so I'm going to actually move to the next clip 
and we here we are to the reveal I just love foiling I love how it's just as magic as heat embossing not really I take that back but just the wow factor and look at it that's beautiful <sighs> like magic uh, okay so I've got my pen adhesive here in the Molotow no this is not the Molotow um, I'll find the right name shortly that's it the Zig two way glue squeeze and roll pen I just so it was not even close but you know you can see it in the view you totally knew which one I was using <laughs> all right so I'm making sure this is adhered down like I am going across it just making sure that not going across going around it and I'm trying to get as much adhesive as I can on here now I'm going to put that towards the top um, and then this is going to be the white frame so this is what comes out when you use those um, circle cross stitch dies it actually cuts out this awesome circle cross stitch frame um, and so then the inside part of it I'm going to pop up with foam tape so I'm going to add the, the dimension with that so I'm going to adhere that down as I said my aim is for the ombre to start to the bottom left that's where I'm wanting the ombre to start and then right as if the light source was coming to the top right I don't know why it just felt like that I could have do it I didn't do it top to bottom I just didn't just didn't my way my card <laughs> all right so then I'm then um, using the same zig two-way glue squeeze and roll pen um, and I'm adhering that now I'm making sure I'm a little bit more careful because this does this is liquid it does come out and I, when I squish it down I don't want it to ooze out on the side so I'm actually just putting um, little tiny dots the pen works really well for this okay so then I'm just going to make sure I don't drop it which I've done before in previous videos and gently placing that down um, I didn't want to get glue on my fingers so I used the back of my adhesive <laughs> my foam squares there so you know trying to be trying to improvise here um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to directly put that on there um, that's some previous stamping beforehand behind that that's what you got to see uh, and then I'll do the same for the bottom reef the bottom reef from the builder set and just adhering that down I don't know why I ended up using this zig glue two-way pen I think it was just on my desk I tend to vary with my glues depending what's available and I suppose what I've been crafting at the time so this is actually a really good glue i like it for fine details i've got some sequins from handmade by Brittany lee and i've got the amber rose because it's got a collection of beautiful rose sequins in her sequin mix so i'm going to be fluffing around for a little bit here i am going to full double time it because i fluff around with playing with my sequins um, and i take my time trying to make sure i get the right placement now I'm just making sure I get the right not only number of sequins but the right sizing I don't want to just um, place it willy-nilly everywhere I do I do I don't know why I usually don't pay this much attention but I did this time around I think because I'm using more than what I would normally would have now for my sequin adhesive I always seem to go to my trusty multi matte medium um, especially I'm using a clear one in amongst that so there is my sequin placement I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching and I cannot wait to hear from you have happy paper crafting people see you later